We all hear voices every day in our lives. But all of us um, hear different voices, but I think we are all affected by them in a similar way. You're not smart enough. Nobody likes you. Everybody thinks you're ugly. You are awkward. You don't matter to anybody. You're, you're a failure. You, you will never be better than you are right now. You're too fat. You're too skinny. You act weird. You are weird. You're a loser. You don't make enough money. You're self-centered. You're not a good husband. You're not a good wife. You're a poor son or a poor daughter. Why can't you be more like him? Why aren't you more attractive like her? You will never amount to anything. You are such a disappointment to God. And the list in our mind goes on and on and on every, every day. The, um, the voices that scream at us, the, the voices that vie for our attention, if you will, they, they make you cringe because every day you hear them in your mind, it, they play themselves over and over. They make you sick inside. And what is worse is most of us come to believe them. And we have for a long, long time, a lifetime. And they hold us captive and they control how far we go. And it is the junk that is hidden in the corners of our mind that we need to have cleaned away. And so we are in a series that we have called Clean, where we've been looking at these areas in our life that we need for God to come in and not only look at, but begin to clean up some of those areas um, in our lives because we accumulate things through life, things that weigh us down, things that weigh our emotions down, things that weigh our spirits down, discourage us, mar us, keep us from moving forward. David in Psalm 51, 7 said, God, will you purify me so that I can be clean? Wash me that I can be whiter than snow. And what David is doing is he's inviting the Holy Spirit to look deep within him so that the Holy Spirit can search him and clean him and renew him. And so as I close this series out, Today, I want us to look at what God's word has to say about our emotions. For many of you, this is an area that controls you in such a powerful way. It dominates you, it, it holds you back, it makes you think awful things about yourself. And my prayer is today that you would allow the Holy Spirit to silence these negative thoughts that permeate your mind day after day and you would begin to believe about yourself what God believes about you. Some weeks, some weeks I can't even go a day without being bombarded, and I'll just say it that way, bombarded with negative thoughts. Just... It seems like one after the other after the other, and it seems my mind gets filled with those. I can get a hundred positive comments or things said to me. Come on, how many of you know this is true? But one negative thing can defeat you. One negative thought, one negative thing that someone has said. So here is the question for us today as we've been looking at questions each week. What negative voices do you struggle with 
the most? What voice screams the loudest at you week after week, year after year, and today with the power of the Holy Spirit, what I hope we can do is learn to close those negative windows that we hear from the past that just dominate who we are. So how do you clear the clutter of bad emotions? How do you allow the Holy Spirit to come in and clean up our minds in such a way that those things no longer control who we are? Well, if you're a Christian, you, you have to allow the Holy Spirit to remind you every day that you are completely forgiven in Christ. Completely forgiven. You're not like partially forgiven, like, okay, I forgave that, I forgave that, ooh, back here. No, 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 no. We'll hold on to that one. No. In, in, in Christ, you are fully forgiven. Paul said in 2 Corinthians, therefore, if any is in Christ, anybody has come into a relationship with Christ, anybody has received Christ into their life, you are a new creation. In other words, you're not what you used to be. You are something far better. You are not what you once were. The old, it's gone. <laughs> the new has now come. Now, now, we know that. Many of us have been around the church for a while. We know this scripture. We understand that what Paul is saying but oftentimes we will, rather than listen to this, we will listen to the negative emotions and things that play over and over in our mind and they will tell us that we don't matter or we are not valuable or we are not have value to God because of something that has happened to us in our past. Huh. Well, you need to know, I, I didn't have the greatest past. My brother is here today. He could come up here and do some preaching, right? Um, I can remember some very ugly situations with me and my brother, um, but I call those BC days before Christ. Because when Christ came in, he made me a new person. Now, I wasn't perfect when that happened. God's, God did a work on me, and, and I'm just telling you, God is still doing a work on me. But you need to know that in spite of who I was, God did not rule me out. He did not look down and go, oh man, look at all of that horrible stuff in Tim's past. I don't think, I, I think I can't, I don't think I can use him. He's like, I gotta rule him out. No, no, no. A rebellious, hurt teenager bent on running as fast as I could from the church, from God, uh, rebelling against my parents. My life was a mess. I would consider what I would call myself a prodigal son that was still living at home. But you need to know and somebody, this is for somebody today. No one is ever too far gone, gone for the power of God to change your life. He can change your life in a split second. Maybe you feel hopeless today that you've sunk too low for God to come and find you where you are and lift you up and change things in your life. You've made too many mistakes, too horrible, too many horrible things in your life and you feel like there is no hope for you for God to ever change me. And you say things like, well, Pastor Tim, you just, you don't know what I've been through. I wasn't raised in church like most people. Those people have lived <laughs> good, clean, moral lives all their life. They never messed up like I have. <laughs> oh, come on, listen to me. You need to know that we are not here in this church because we are perfect. We are here because we have been forgiven. Without the forgiveness of Christ and the everlasting mercy of our heavenly Father, we wouldn't have a chance. But I know there are some of you who are saying, yeah, but there's nobody here that's been hooked on drugs like I have. There's nobody here that's cheated on their mate like I did, that carried that weight. Nobody here that's been hooked on pornography that has just ripped my life apart. Nobody that's been down and lonely and depressed as I have. Nobody that has spent time in jail. Nobody that's had trouble with the law. Nobody who has stolen things like I did. No one who has been so low that they have thought often or even tried to commit 
suicide. Nobody like that here. And I would say to you, if that's what you're thinking, sure there is. All across this room. You may be sitting by them today and you didn't realize that there are are people all over this building and even watching online who were just like you. They were in those same situations. The only difference between you and them is that they have chosen to make Jesus Christ the Lord of their life. And when they did that, he changed their circumstances and he changed their life. And and he'll, he'll do the same for you. Well, Pastor, I don't know if that's true that all those people would be here today. Well, let me... Let me prove it to you today. Now, some of you don't know me well, but I'm going to ask you today if you'll trust me today, and it, if you will, you will allow God to use you, your life, to bless and encourage someone else. So trust me. How many of you in this place have ever done drugs of any time? I'm talking of any kind. I'm talking about like a time in your life before Christ, you were on cocaine or heroin or LSD or you smoked pot or you were addicted to another drug, maybe pills, but but that was you. How many of you have ever been addicted to alcohol? In other words, it had an effect on you in some way that it controlled you. You had to have like that next drink. You, You drank a lot. How many of you have ever been arrested for something or have spent time in jail or have spent time in prison? How many of you ever stole something? You took something, it wasn't yours, you knew it was wrong, you took it, maybe you lied to get it or you deceived a spouse or you deceived a friend. How many of you ever messed up a marriage? I mean, I'm not talking about, well, it was their fault and therefore the marriage. No, no, no. I'm saying it was your fault. You know it was your fault and you take responsibility for it being your fault. You messed up. You had an affair. You, you abused your spouse or something like that. How many of you ever been so depressed or discouraged that you thought about or actually tried to commit suicide. You, you were gonna take your own life. Things were so desperate that you tried to even or you thought about seriously taking your own life. You thought if I could just end this, everything would be better. How many of you have ever been abusive to a spouse, abusive to a parent, abusive to a child, and it damaged your relationships. How many of you have ever been addicted to pornography and it affected and it ruined relationships in your life and you just got sucked into that and you saw the awful, horrible consequences of it in your own life? It's okay, take a breath. But of all those things that I said, if it applies to you, but God has forgiven you of all of that junk. Listen to me. If you have ever done any of those things that I mentioned in the midst of a very loving church as a testimony of God's love and his amazing grace, would you stand up in this place? Come on. I'm standing. I'm standing. Come on, all over this place. God forgave me. This is who I used to be. But God forgave me and he saved me and he changed my life and he turned me around. Come on, stay standing for just a minute. You know, the Bible says when, uh, when God forgives you from much, he will love you with much. <laughs> He will pour out his love on you over and over again. Stay standing. Listen, I look across this place. No wonder when we come into this place on Sunday, there is such enthusiastic worship. 
No, no wonder our worship is so awesome and people with their hands lifted for his great love that crosses over to where we used to be and he redeems us and he forgives us and he loves us. Come on, give God praise for what he's done in your life today. Come on. Oh, thank you for standing. You may be seated. Wow. See, there is no emotional bondage so strong for the power of God to break it because all of it has to bow. Every addiction, every struggle, every sin, all of it has to bow in the name of Jesus no matter what your sin is or what your failure was. Jesus trumps everything in your life that has happened. Now the psalmist, the psalmist said in Psalm 40, this is how he describes it. This is like his testimony. Come on, anybody in this place got a testimony? If you stood, you should. The psalmist said, by the way, the psalmist David, he'd have been the first one standing today. He said, he lifted me out of the pit of despair, out of the mud and the mire, and he set my feet on solid ground, and he steadied me as I walked along. Oh, but watch, he doesn't stop there. Watch what he says next. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Listen to me. You are not with Christ. You are not what you used to be. You are now a new song. You have a new reason to sing. You have a new reason to have joy. You have a new purpose. You have a new life before you. And here is the, here is the problem for many of you. Many of us, even though Christ has forgiven you, you have not forgiven yourself. And you're, you're not singing the new song, you're singing the old song of who you used to be, the condemnation, the doubt, the guilt, you have some things in your past that have caused you pain. You have some things in your past that have caused others pain and it brought shame on you and you feel that shame every day and you listen to the voices that we talked about early on that say you are worthless, you are a failure, you cause pain, you hurt people, you don't deserve forgiveness. And you ask Christ to forgive you and he has. Maybe you even asked others to forgive you, and they have. But you have never forgiven yourself. And when you carry unforgiveness in your life, especially toward yourself, it will ruin your emotional life every day. It dominates you, it controls you. But in Christ, you need to understand you are forgiven. You are not what you have done. You are who God says you are. <laughs> we sang about it a minute ago. We might as well just believe it. Listen, what you have done does not define who you are. God always defines who you are. You listen to his voice. You listen to his promises. You are the very product and identity of what God breathed over your very life. You are not what others say you are. You are who God says you are. Jesus paid it all. Who washes away my sin? Tell me. Jesus. Who, who erases every wrong I've done? Who gets me through the day when I just want to quit? Who protected me this week from things that I didn't even know could have happened to me, but he stepped in and protected me? Jesus. Who sees worth in me? Who sees good in me? Who sees value in me? Who sees purpose in my life? Well, Jesus does. Paul assures us in Ephesians, he says, in Christ we have redemption through his blood. And then he describes what that is. That is the forgiveness of sin in accordance with the riches of God's grace. Where, where does that come from? Jesus there is a reason the windshield in your car is 67 times larger than your rearview mirror. 
Where you are going matters a whole lot more than where you have been. And some of you, for your whole life, you have just spent time looking in the rearview mirror. And let me just tell you, if you only look in the rearview mirror, you will go off into the ditch. I've heard. <laughs> That's why Paul said in Philippians 3.14, I have to forget my past. I have to strain forward. See, strain, I have to, every day I have to push forward. It's not easy. I, I get, I hear these voices, but I have to, push ahead, move forward. And the greatest thing some of you could do for your emotional life is to stop looking back at what you've done or what you used to be. In Christ, you are forgiven. The second thing you have to do is you have to remind yourself you are completely protected in Christ. You're not just forgiven by him, you are protected in Christ. Paul said in Romans chapter 8, in all these things, we are more than conquerors. You're beyond, you're beyond defeat. You are more than conquer, conquerors. How? Through him who loved us. And then we go on, and Paul gives us this verse that we all know. We love this, these verses, but this is the context. It says, for I them am convinced that neither death nor life neither angels or demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers. What's he saying? Nothing in my life, nothing in the past, nothing in the present, nothing in the future is gonna separate me from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, our Lord. And whenever you hear those negative voices, you have to remember, I'm protected by Christ. Nothing is gonna separate me from his love in my life. Whenever you hear you're not good enough, whenever you feel like you don't measure up, you're not worthy enough, remind yourself that you are an overcomer, not because of who you are, but because of the blood of Jesus Christ in your life. Tell those voices to be silent. And the only way you shut them out is with the promises of God that I'm bringing to you today. You have to play them over and over in your mind because Satan will try to distract you and destroy you. Isaiah said it this way, and this is God talking, so do not fear, oh, do I just need to stop there for some of you? Some of you, your emotions control you because of fear in your life, fear of what's behind you, fear of things that you're going through right now, fear of things that are before you that 90% of, uh, of the time are never gonna happen anyway. So do not fear for I am with you. Do not be dismayed, I am your God. Where are you gonna get the strength? God's gonna give it to you. I will strengthen you. I will help you. I will protect you with my righteous right hand. You are completely protected in Christ. Satan can't get to you unless he goes through Christ. Satan can't destroy your life because you are protected by Christ. You are completely protected. You are valuable not because of who you are, but because of whose you are. <laughs> Paul said in Ephesians, do not be afraid, stand firm. You will see the deliverance the Lord will bring to you. I love this verse. I have to remind myself all the time. I don't have to fight. The Lord's gonna fight for me. The Lord's gonna fight Satan for me. I, I just need to be still. You know, it's that passage of, uh, you know, uh, that says, be still and know that I am God. Stop trying to work yourself through it. Try, stop fretting yourself through it. Just be still and know that I am God. Because there are a thousand ways that Satan tried to bring you down this week. And when you come into this place on Sunday, you ought to have worship in your heart because though Satan tried to bring you down, God protected you he surely did so you tell these voices to be silent some of you like Doug Heffernan don't even know who Doug Heffernan is do you he would say it like this he would say to the voices shuddy shuddy that's all right. all right you have to watch King of Queens to get that apparently this is the wrong crowd And then you have to, let me, let me close it out, then you have to constantly remind yourself that you are completely free in Christ. 
free from what? Free from everything that's in your past, free from every mistake you ever made, free from every failure, every hurt that you caused, every addiction that you had. You are free from all of that in Christ. John, uh, in, in, in John, Jesus said, so if the Son sets you free, you are free indeed. You're not enslaved any longer. You can be free from addictions. You can be free from negative thinking. You can be free from a life of sin. You can be free from anger in your spirit. You can be free from the hurts of the past. You can be free from those voices that we talked about at the beginning that haunt you day after day. You can be free from negative words that you hear, uh, that people said about you. You are completely free in Christ. Paul said, there is now no, oh, some of you need this. There is now no condemnation for you. He's not looking down at you, disappointed in you, finding fault with you. When he looks at you, listen, when he looks at you, he has to look through Jesus to get to you. And all he sees is Jesus in you. Oh, you didn't get that, did you? He's not looking at who you used to be. He is looking at Christ that is living in you. Um, You read through the Old Testament. You read through some of the patriarchs. um, One of those was Joseph in the Bible. Joseph, you know the story. He was sold into slavery by his brothers. They hated him. My brother never sold me. He thought about it a few times, but he never sold me. (laughs) He was abused by his family, sold into slavery, put in prison, falsely accused, started to rise up, promised certain things, shot back down. Eventually, he would rise to second in command in the entire land But if you read the story of Joseph, you will find that he is still held captive by the emotions of his past, the injustices that happened to him, the pain that he had to endure. And one day he finds himself in the story, um, because there's a famine in the land, you know the story, and um, um, Joseph was put in charge of all of the, the food, and so his brothers are coming, they don't know who he is, They don't realize, they think he's dead. So they're coming to him. The people that caused his pain are now coming to him for life, for food. And he is now finding himself face to face with the brothers that betrayed him and gave him, come on, gave him, this is his perception, a life of pain. And in Genesis chapter 45 verses the first two or three verses, you get a little snapshot a, a window of the pain that Joseph is going through and probably had gone through for years and maybe some of you can relate to this. Then Joseph could no longer control himself before his attendants. And he cried out. And he has everybody leave his, he's like, go away. I don't want you to see my pain. I don't want anybody to understand what's going on in me. Just get away, let me be by myself. I've been in prison for years, not literal prison, but in the prison of his own mind with all these emotions that he has held in all these years. Go away, I don't want you to see my pain. And then there is this verse that says, and he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him and Pharaoh's household heard all about him. And here's a guy in a closed room and maybe for the first time in his life he lets all of his emotions out and all of this stuff just comes erupting out of his life. He's hiding his pain from the very ones that could bring healing, his brothers. He could get it all settled right there. He's hiding it from them. 
Years of question, years of pain, years of regret, years of remorse, hurt just pouring out of his whole body as he is crying there. Here is a guy who has everything. Come on. Some of you think, if I could just achieve more, I'd get over my emotional struggles and battles. If I could prove to somebody I'm really a somebody. No, 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 no. You, you, he is imprisoned by his emotions, though he is second in command, has everything maybe blaming himself, but in that moment, it all comes gushing out. And here's what I will tell you. You can hold on to your emotions all you want, and you can blame people all you want, and you can have, it will come a time, and it will come gushing out. And if you don't deal with it in a healthy way, when it comes gushing out, it could hurt those around you that you love the most. So Joseph sends for his father, you know, he kind of confronts them and they hug and whatever Egyptians did. And then Joseph sends for his father. His father has thought he was dead all these years. Imagine the pain his father felt, deceived by his sons. And so Joseph sends word and when his father hears that Joseph is alive, when they told their father everything, when they came clean. He realized his son's alive. The spirit of Jacob revived. Many of us carry deep pain today. How do you know, pastor? Because I'm really smart. No, it's because I've been around it long enough and I've dealt with people long enough and I've dealt with my own emotions long enough that I know there are many people in this place today that have deep pain and many have been hiding it and holding on to it for so long. Maybe we're not close to a parent, to a sibling, to a child, to a spouse, to a friend because we were hurt and we held on to those things and we put them inside and it has controlled who we are and even our relationships. And here's what I think God sent me here today to say. If we dealt with those things face to face with the issues and we let them come out today, it would release the pain of the past and your spirit, your life, could be revived again. Some of, you have, some of you have been hurt by a myriad of things. I don't wanna go through all, you just name it. And the pain is on your face and the pain is expressed in how you treat others. And you're hurting people that you really don't even want to hurt because your spirit has been crushed and you have never dealt with this. And so let's get back to the question that I started out with this morning. What negative voice do you struggle with the most? For some of you, it is just time, isn't it? Just time to lay that down and to get free, to be healed because you are not what others say you are. You are what Christ says you are, what he gave his life to make you, and you can't do this on your own. I know. You're not strong enough, smart enough, wealthy enough. But Jesus said, with me, <laughs> all things are possible, with me, if you get close to me, it's possible. If you lean on me, it's possible. And if you wanna get free from emotional bondage, you have to start every day learning to lean on him. I've told you before, um, when my brother and I were younger, we had a grandmother and uh, she was an invalid uh, confined to a wheelchair 
our grandfather passed away and then she lived with us for, uh, until she died. And our house uh, on the main floor was a back room and it had bunk beds in it. And for several years, my brother slept on the top bunk and she slept down below. Am I saying it right? Then he went off to college and when he went off to college, I got promoted <laughs> to the top bunk. And we were there basically in case she needed something in the night or to help her or whatever. But I would also, you've heard me say before, I, I would often go to sleep hearing her sing. I, I used to think she was singing me to sleep. That's what I used to think. But I learned it was just songs of testimonies of her life coming out. And one song that she would often sing is an old, old, old chorus. Like really old. I mean, you have to be really old to know this song. Mark, you'll know it. Uh, but she used to sing this song. Learning to lean. Learning to lean. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Here it is. Finding more power than I ever dreamed. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. There are some, some of you here today and the thing that could turn the emotional situation in your life around is if you would simply learn every day not to rely on your own understanding, not to rely on the things that are going through your mind, not to believe the words you're hearing about yourself, not to believe all of the voices, but to, in spite of whatever I'm going through or whatever I'm facing, learning to push in and lean on Jesus. And I want us maybe to turn some things around today for some of you. I want us to sing this old song that has a powerful but relevant truth that as I lean on Jesus, I find his power and sustenance to help me in whatever I have been through and whatever I am going through. And so I wanna invite you to stand with me. Maybe you'd like to come and pray this morning like so many do each week. <laughs> Do you have an area of your life that you just need to lean on him in right now? I don't understand this. I, I'm, I'm going through this. I, I don't know what to do. It's just, I don't know what to do, but I need to lean on him because it's as Peter said, cast all your cares on him because he cares for you. What is Peter saying? You can lean on him. Pastor, I've been leaning. It's okay. Lean harder. Did you know you can put all of your weight on him? Maybe you're lonely. Maybe your spouse is gone and at times your loneliness is overwhelming. And you just say, I'm leaning on you today, Jesus. You're all I have. And you'll find he's quite enough. Maybe your emotional cup is full and you just want to maybe come. And I love the symbolism of the altars because it's like I can bring stuff and symbolically lay it down. Like, here's my burden, Lord. There it is. You, you said come, so I'm coming. Here it is. I lay it down. And as you get up, leave it there and then be reminded that Jesus is going with you this week and you can lean on him. Some of you, oh wow, some of you have a life of sin that is so heavy. Sins, can I tell you, sin is always heavy. And you can bring your sin and lay it down, as so many did last week.
and lean on Jesus. Oh, here's one I'm a little more sensitive to these days. <laughs> Some of you may have a health issue. Come on, where are my health issue people? Oh yeah, I love you. And it weighs heavy on your heart. You can come and lay that down too. In fact, uh, James says you can get anointed um, and, and, and get healing that can come from that as you cast that down, lay that health concern down. That never, uh, well, let me say, let me be careful how I say this. A lot of times, come on, a lot of times we quote scripture and we think we understand scripture or what the scripture is saying, but we really don't understand it until we've gone through it. So, you know, I preached a lot about, oh, you got Christ in your life, you can, he'll go with you all to the grave. You can have peace when you're ready to meet him. <laughs> well, that became real for me when I was wheeled into that operating room and the doctor said, if we, you could die. But I am telling you, as sure as I'm standing here, there was such a peace. I was like, oh man, I'd miss Vicky. <laughs> but I get to see Jesus. See, you can walk, you can lean on him enough and walk so closely to him that even in moments that all the world would fear, you embrace it. Oh, I love it. Okay, this, hang on, we're getting there. One of our nurses came last Sunday who was on the floor when Willie Miller uh, passed away about a year and a half or so ago. And you remember me telling the story. I, he was on death's door. They told me he had a day or two to live. And I walked in the room. And, and here was his expression when I walked in the room. Preacher, I'm going home. And I thought, that is the strangest thing because they told me you were buried down. You're going home? You're like you're, They're going to dismiss you today? He goes, no, preacher, I'm going home. Now, I knew, you knew that story, so I've told that. That's a great one. I've still got his picture. It's, I'll cherish it forever. We did our last selfie together. Here's, here's what I want to tell you. Last week, a nurse came up to me and said, what you don't know is that he had such an influence at the end of his life, the peace, the joy, that the head nurse had gotten away from the Lord and when she saw his life and when he passed away, she said, I am getting back to the Lord. And she has gotten saved and she is back in church every Sunday. Praise be to God. See, even in death, his peace, when you lean on him, there is a peace that goes beyond our ability to understand. I don't know what battle you're facing, but I would invite you, just as we sing this chorus, as we pray, if you'd like to come and pray about something or lay something down, hey, some of you could really lean on him today. This is your moment. Let's sing this song. i yeah. 